Welcome back, Achievers, to this week's episode of the Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of September 14th of 2023. It's already September. Isn't that strange? I feel like every time I do this, it, it's nice because you get a, I get to refresh myself on what week it is of the month, and it really cements in your mind like, whoa, already at X week of the year. And that it's really hit this year. It's like, oh, God, it's already September. It feels like we're really flying through this year. This week, news is actually pretty dense, as we first started off, I feel like, with like, eh, you know, there's some news here. Of course, we have that Unity thing to discuss that was all over the gamey discourse for the week. Of course, there were the punching bag. And now we have both a State of Play and a Nintendo Direct that we'll go over, which I'm very excited to talk about. So I do want to just jump in this week, as it's pretty, pretty we got quite a bit to talk about, so let's get into it. Not so rapid fire. News coming the way of Insider Gaming's Mike Straw, EA is reportedly ceasing support for Wild Hearts, their attempt at a Monster Hunter-like game after only seven months on the market. Reportedly from both the official Discord for the game and on the game subreddit by moderator Beardy Shaman says, quote, What you think happened to the game has unfortunately happened. In typical EA news, it seems like they did not want to sit on the game and give it the time and expected it to most likely be the next Monster Hunter. Seems like it didn't turn into a multi-million dollar hit big hit they wanted and don't want to give it the love to grow, end quote. Wild Hearts was released on PS5, Xbox Series, SNX, and PC and was developed by Omega Force and published by EA. From the reveal, it seemed it may actually challenge Monster Hunter's spot on the throne of the massive Monster Hunter type games, but since release, it hasn't seemed to develop much of a fan base to build on. I don't have much to add here as one I didn't try it out. Two I had high hopes for the game as it's just it does seem like Monster Hunter is really the only game out there that's really doing what it does. And it's it seemed like someone tried to go up it right on Mega Force tried and it seemed like they kind of fell on their face with uh what they expected from it. It's just shocking that EA just packs out so fast off these projects as they really seem like if they don't see any change in the waters, they will just rip the cord and abandon it, right? We saw this with Anthem, of course, in a completely different way. And also, there's almost no similarities other than it's CA, but it goes to show you that they don't really want to give it the time of day, right? We saw also with the same studio, Mass Effect and Drama, right? They canceled DLCs, completely put them off the game. They, they, they are big into uh we you know the sunk cost fallacy of like hey we we were able to launch it it didn't work let's get out of here right and they're very very much one of the examples of they're not they're not trying to to create the they're not trying to sit on something and try to make something new which is strange because there really is an example of something out there that came out immediately and became a smash hit without time right that doesn't really happen in anything let alone video games uh, you can look to things that I'm sure some people are out there thinking like, oh, Fortnite. I think the closest thing, uh, Fortnite took uh, years to even come out. When it came out, it wasn't one I discussed. And then they wanted for fun to make a battle royale uh, after being like on the market for like two to three years because they liked PUBG, right? I think the closest thing you can actually relate to is maybe like PUBG as like a, a giant success out of nowhere. Maybe a little bit of Minecraft too. And you could also say... um. Apex Legends is actually one of those things, but again, those are just few and far between. And not only that, those were those were things that had a base to come out of, right? You know, uh, Apex didn't come from it from nothing. Those people were respawn who just made two pretty great and fantastic games. Uh, so these things always take time and it seems the age is just not interested in devoting that time so i'm curious why they stick with this theming of trying to work these games as a service like just let's just move on right we can go all the way back to um uh, was uh, who made evolve did we am i remembering evolve correctly did they have a hand in that give me one second achievers because i do want to see this because this would actually be a good example of it being and that was 2k that's not correct so that's not the example I was looking for, but you can, again, things off the top of my mind, Anthem and, and these other games, you can really look at it and be, yeah, that was uh, that was attempted. You tried and then you immediately got out there and there's so many games you could point to that keep going and 
and find a way to succeed, right? No Man's Sky is one of those popular, very popular examples. Cyberpunk, of course. One of those things that came out was completely broken head time. And they worked on it and developed it and were able to make it into something special. Something, uh, again, alongside that, we can bring up... Um, I mean, what's another game I could bring up? Destiny 1 and 2. Both of those launches were pretty disastrous uh, in many, many ways, especially when you talk about Destiny 2 and... They stuck with it, and even though things seemed dark, they were able to bounce up, and EA is no slouch. They have the money and revenue and things like that to really back it up, and they just don't seem to want to. And speaking of EA, many listings to this show, many, many listening to the show, I'm sorry, may have forgotten, but Immortals of Avium, the EA original made by Senate Studios, has come out and has little to no fanfare around it. Obviously, stemming from this, the CEO of Ascendant, Brett Robbins, announced today that layoffs will be coming to the studio. Quote, today we are heartbreaking as we part ways with friends and colleagues at Ascendant Studios. About 45% of our team. This was a painfully difficult but necessary decision that was not made lightly. Nevertheless, we have to make the suggestion now that our mortals of Avium has shipped. We are supporting those affected in every way we can, including comprehensive severance packages and job placement assistance, as well as support services for those who remain, end quote. He goes on to mention if anyone is looking for talented Unreal Engine 5 developers, then contact the studio for potential hires and speaks on how he is proud of the team for releasing Immortals. Immortals of Avium is a first-person magic shooter that released August 22nd of 2023 on PS5, Xbox Series, SNX, and PC to little critical reception, and you can imagine even smaller sales. Sad to see, as it did look promising even from my perspective looking into the game as an avid gamer and of course love my first person shooters doom doom eternal etc apex legends destiny blah 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 i can keep naming things off immortals of avium looked incredible it, it, it looks very good the story from first glance seemed like the normal magic nonsense kind of thing that wouldn't probably resonate with me but the gameplay seemed there to for me to really care about the game um unfortunately just mixed with the on the surface not didn't seem stellar story because it wasn't transferring via trailers they were really focusing on the combat in those trailers and the writing just seemed a little cringy at, at times and had those kind of hallmark of examples of like oh do i really want to listen to that for x amount of hours i didn't have time to check it out of course in another year i feel like i would have definitely have bought it and given it some time but there are just too many fantastic spectacular games around it that it demands little to no attention for me as uh, this is too much right i have starfield currently i have uh destiny 2 to go back to if if i get bored of that i have spider-man 2 upcoming i have so many games that i can go back to i can go back to uh boulders gate 3 on both ps5 and a pc or sorry pc and now ps5 uh through cross saving and these things there's too many good video games out there that it's hard to even justify one um i believe it is a 70 dollar purchase let me double check immortals of avium oh let's just look up xbox because i believe it launched on xbox let's see buy immortals of avium 70 bucks right it definitely looks like a 70 dollar game i'm not trying to come across as as saying that right, graphically in these things but if they're maybe able to scale back how it looks of course this is an unreal engine 5 game so this is kind of the first kind of tasting that we get of it uh of what an unreal engine 5 game can look like but but just seeing that 70 dollars price tag putting that next to a boulder skate 3 next to a starfield next to you know x x game here it just didn't hit the mark for me to warrant the time because at this point it's not necessarily uh an issue of if I should spend the money on it, it's an issue of should I spend the money and will I get my time out of it? And that, that question for me was very much. I'm curious if anyone out there played it or or interested in the game or if you had a similar situation with me where you just could not justify both the cost and time that you would have to have spent to play this game. I feel bad for, of course, the entire studio for having to lay off half the team. And this is another instance of of EA just hammering away at a, at a, at a studio once... um it's clear that they made no money and it's unfortunate as if you read between the lines, it looks like they probably lost a lot of cash on this deal, which is very unfortunate for everyone. 
Last to rapid fire for the week. I just two will see early access next spring slash Q2 of 2024, which was announced in a blog post earlier today as of recording. So only quick there. I'm, I'm going to try and stay away from the early access as I am a big fan of just playing the game. I just want to play the game, although I am a huge lover of Hades, one of my top 10 video games of all time, probably maybe even top five. Love, love, love those games. And I love them so much, but I, I just I don't really want to play the early access. I would rather just sit there and be like, you know, I'm just going to wait for the full release. I'm not huge into being like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to pay beta test it for lack of a better word. That's pretty much what you're doing. I just don't. I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. Let's talk about what you've been playing. Now, of course, at home, you can discuss what you've been playing in comments below. Tweet at me, whatever you'd like. I personally have been sticking with uh, tried and true Starfield, of course, much deeper, much, much deeper into it than last we discussed. Of course, last week, I was only a few hours into it. I, I think I'm 20 plus hours into it now, 25 ish. And I am loving every second. It's always something new when I get on, right? It's it's what I love about those Bethesda games, right? Not one play session is like another, right? You 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 find yourself uh, bouncy hunting on one play session, right? And you go on and find yourself on this grand adventure where you'll find like uh, this grandma on this. Fight. I found this random grandma that like was cooking food and said, "Are you know Are you hungry?" His food and these things. It was very cute. And then um. The other day, I finished the UC quest line. I won't spoil anything here, but finishing that quest line, having this kind of alien subplot esque scenario, which was very cool. A lot of questions being asked. Uh, there's this whole kind of cyberpunk cyberpunk esque plot line with a place called Ryujin that you can just uh, find out and discover, and kind of like a corporate spy espionage type things that were just very good all around. I'm having a blast with Starfield. Definitely a contender for Game of the Year for me. And I can't recommend this enough. One, of course, as a reminder, on Game Pass, if you have Game Pass, you got Starfield. So go give it a try. If you don't pay for Game Pass, I would still recommend this if you have any love for an RPG, if you have any love for a deep, deep role-playing game that you are okay spending 20 to 50 hours in. I, I do feel like this could be a short experience if you'd like it to be. You could really mainline a couple of the faction quests and mainline the main story, beat the game, and see if you wanted to continue in the game, as I've heard the new game plus is actually very appealing to some people. You could do that, but that's really not, you know, that's up to you. It, it's not a game that I feel like demands you to jump 100, 100 hours, which I feel like a lot of people feel that way. They feel like, oh, you know, I have to do X mission. I have to do Y thing. And in reality, this is a game where you could pick whatever you'd like to be, so... I find that strange when people say that, where they feel like they need to do something. And this game is kind of demanding you to feel whatever you want and play however you want. So highly recommend the game. Go enjoy it. No room around it this week as, one, I couldn't see anything uh, good enough to include. And two, uh, we have such a deep start of the, sh uh, the start of the show and not so rapid fire that I felt it was just necessary to pretty much skip that and just go hard deep into things that were happening. Let's start the show for the week. Of course, we have Unity to discuss. Let's talk about this. Unity was in the gaming Discord hot seat this week for a large announcement that took many off guard and made even more people question the logic leading to the decision. Quick background for those unfamiliar. Unity is a popular game engine to use, especially for newer developers. The engine is pretty popular, and you have no doubt played some of the games made with it. Pokemon Go, Call of Duty Mobile, Cuphead, Ori Will, The Wisps, just to name a few. First launched in June of 2005 and created by Unity Technologies, it was originally a Mac OS X game engine. It gradually moved away from the platform and incorporated essentially the entire gaming landscape as we know it today. Now, the pricing has changed over the last few years, as in its first years on the market, it was actually a one-time fee system. You know, you buy it once and you own it, in, in quotes, own the licensing for it. But it then changed to a subscription model that had both a free and paid licensing offer. The free offer would be something where it allow any person or small company to make money from the engine uh, with a game until about 200000 in gross revenue, of course. Once you are over that in revenue, you need the Unity Pro option. Now, this is where, uh, it, and this is also required for any closed console platform, meaning Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox. That will be provided for any of their development kits that were not sent out. Oh, sorry. But this was uh, provided for any of their development kits that were sent out to developers, right? So that was already required or inside their dev kits. If 
uh, you requested or paid for one, pretty much. Now that brings us to the now, as they announced that they will be charging a, quote, runtime fee, end quote, that will take in effect January 2024. This is a charge per installation by user and will be charged monthly. If they reach specific revenue and lifetime is installation thresholds. What are those thresholds and installation thresholds? Let's quickly discuss them, right? So as a reminder, Unity Personal uh, and Unity Plus are pretty much those kind of free options uh, for smaller developers, right? So the Unity runtime fee thresholds will be met for uh, those two options will be $200,000 for the last 12 months. And the install thresholds will be 200,000 life to date. So uh, those will have to be met in order to start charging you for installation, right? Now, per monthly rate of installation for that first, um, uh, for for that bracket of people will be 20 cents per installation, right? 20 cents per installation. Now, installs over the install thresholds on the emerging market monthly rate will be 0.02%, or sorry, point zero two cents per install all right so that's for the beginner pretty much right the free s subscription server now let's move on to what pro and enterprise are right revenue threshold for unity pro will be a million dollars and the install threshold will also be a million units life to date now these have brackets inside of them i won't bore uh, many with how crazy it gets uh and each installation bracket. i'm only going to be doing pro just as for the uh, instance, enterprise is pretty much like a seems like a ten percent to fifteen percent esque discount per install. So for your first one to a hundred thousand, be fifteen cents per install. Then pass that from one hundred and one thousand to five hundred thousand. It's it's seven and a half cents. So seven cents plus a half penny, pretty much. Right. Then after that, from 500,000 to 1 million, it's 0 0.03, so 3 cents per install. And then over a million plus is 2 cents per install, right? So 0 0.02 cents per install. And of course, they add the emerging monthly market rate thing, 0 0.01 install. Pretty complicated there, but that is how they broke it down in a pretty much bracket that they released. Now, this began in uproar for many in the press and gaming development space, as originally it was pretty unclear how these fees were even going to be put in place and was easily dunked down for being a confusing charge. Developers who use the platform began making statements like Inner Sloth, maker of Among Us, Angle Crab, the maker of upcoming game uh, Another Crab's Treasure, and many more. On top of that, the blog posts were unclear about how many scenarios were going to work out, such as charity bundles, pirated coffees, and of course, the biggest question mark, how does it deal with Game Pass work? Now, I found this uh, update via Windows Central by James Gordon uh, when I was researching this. Uh, Stephen Still of Axios reported that Unity intends to pass on the costs for installation fees to Microsoft and other subscription providers for services like Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Plus. We've reached out to Microsoft to comment on this since it appears that Unity seems to be making this up as policies as it goes along the way. Unity also said that it will waive all the installation fees for developers who adopt its ads platform on mobile in a corrosive move which one developer at a major mobile publisher stated to me could be in breach of EU contractual law. So it does kind of seem like they're just making things up at the go. Uh, as a lot of these scenarios were not covered, they had a... Uh, kind of justification later on. They have an even bigger blog post later on. We'll, we'll discuss. It was actually on Twitter. I apologize. It's not blog, blog, blog post, but they had an even bigger statement. We'll discuss in a second. And another thing I found out actually via Windows Central that I feel like sums up a lot of stuff uh, very well. We're going to be going over to Face Punches. Gary Newman, this is the studio behind Rust, as he made a little blog post uh, that, that sums it up very well, and he named it Hold on. He named it. Oh, what's going on? There we go. He named it, quote, Unity can get fucked. <laughs> That's what it's called. So this is everything from the blog. This is kind of short read, but I think it's important to read. And this was posted yesterday. Uh, 
Yesterday, Unity announced that starting next year, all games that use their engine will pay a tax per install. The tax has a high profit threshold before it kicks in, which I think they assumed would make it okay. Over the last 24 hours, there have been many reasons pointing out why this is a bad idea. Tracking installs is messy, piracy, reinstalls, new computers, giveaways, bad actors. There are a lot of reasons why it isn't feasible. It makes you wonder how they can make how they can think it's a good idea. And maybe it is a good idea if you think of Unity as a mobile game engine. If you view it through that lens, maybe it makes sense to them. Maybe they forgot about PC gaming again. And this next one is the cost. Let me be clear, the cost isn't a big issue to us. If everything worked out, the tracking was flawless. And it was 10, uh, I assume, uh, uh, P per sale, 10 P per sale, pen? is that pencil? I don't, I don't know. No biggie, really. If that's what it costs, then that's what it costs. But that's not why we're furious. It, f it hurts because we didn't agree to this. We use the engine because you pay up front and then ship your product. We weren't told this was going to happen. We weren't warned. We weren't consulted. We have spent 10 years making Rust on Unity's engine. We've paid them every year, and now they've changed the rules. Next one is titled Bo Broken Trust. Unity has shown its power. We can see what they can and are willing to do. You can't unring that bell. If you had asked me last week whether it was in Unity's power to start charging us per sale of our games, I'd have said that was crazy and no. Surely that's not possible. That would be like Adobe charging all users a Photoshop per image view and trying to invent a system in which they can track and invoice you every month and not only the new images, but all the images that you created over the last 20 years, then automatically invoicing you every month. But that's what happened. And now we know they can do that and that they're willing to do that. Unity is the worst company to be in charge of the Unity engine. The trust is gone. Next, retrospect is what this had. It's our fault, all of our faults. We sleepwalked into it. We had a ton of warnings. We should have been pressing the eject button when Unity IPO'd in 2020. Every single thing they've done since then has been the exact opposite of what was good for the engine we had 10 years to make our own engine and never did i'm sure a lot of game companies are feeling the same today let's not make the same mistake again rust 2 definitely won't be a unity game i feel like that last section is maybe the most important one out of this entire thing that we're going to be discussing today in specifics to of course this unity situation right not only does this kind of break the trust as he says right the trust is gone we they've un they can't unring the bell right they've told everyone that this is something they're willing and will do and his photoshop analysis she was pretty funny and kind of on point as it does kind of feel like it that is a similar situation where it's they're trying to retroactively gain money on other unity projects and it does seem like they have nowhere uh, they they don't know what they're going now uh, if you don't know what uh ipo it is let me get you the actual definition for this to make sure so initial public offering meaning you're hitting the stock market right so you're going to ipo meaning all right let's get our pretty much investments let's go public with shares and all these things and uh, that's actually something that segues perfectly into what i want to talk about next which is why and that's everyone's question like why would they do this right that's i'm sure what everyone at home is thinking about right now why would they want to uh, kind of do this underhandedly? And the answer, of course, is money, right? Isn't that always, isn't that always the case, you know? Isn't that always the, the answer to all of your thoughts and, and like what you would think uh, a question for something would be? Like, uh, you know, why would they do this? And of course, money trying to get their stock up really quickly there we go unity software incorporated now their current stock price is 35.71 right this is over the course of today the market of course is closed so that's what they closed at now i want to see more about their year to date so let's look at their year to date for so from this year on they're actually 
pretty crazy stack tracking. So if you actually look at home, you can see this uh, per month. It, it's pretty much all over the place. So if you go back to March of 2023, they they are uh, February 24, 23, they closed at 2961, right? So they've pretty much had a high of four, 4850 in July of this year. And then they've crashed down to 3571 with their lowest this year being uh, about $24. So, of course, they need revenue, most likely, from the scenario. Uh, they need to generate income. I am imagining they're probably drowning of some sort, right? This is a giant, like, uh, assault in the other direction, right? This isn't just like, oh, you know, we just want to make a couple bucks, right? And we need something that continually gets us more money into the future, right? They, they could have made this simple, which is something that I find interesting that they didn't just slap a flat... The, you know, we need X amount of money uh, from your from the game engine at this much. Maybe that was seen as uh, not enough, but seeing as they want to now char charge for every single install, pretty much like it, it, it's wild. And also for the, this to come out and them just not having the answers ready it clearly shows that there just was a giant miscommunication from pretty it's, i mean to me seemingly everyone involved in this seems like no one really knew the full ins and out right it didn't seem like there was one person who completely understood hey this is what's happening this is what happens in this scenario in this scenario right very interesting that they made this whole blog post didn't didn't say game pass said that oh no, no microsoft will pay for it now it's like oh, okay um do they know that <laughs> like, so, do, do, uh, I'm, I'm assuming they do but it doesn't seem like they do with with all these things and see if I can get they did have a statement that I want to quickly go over and see if there's anything I want to talk about from it. Um, I don't think there is, to be frank, but let's see here. They had a full statement earlier uh, yesterday. It was around 550. So this is a statement on their Twitter I want to quickly go over. We want to acknowledge the confusion and frustration we heard after we announced our new runtime fee policy. We'd like to clarify some of your top questions and concerns. Who is affected by this price increase? The price increase is very targeted. In fact, more than 90% of our customers will not be affected by this change. Customers who will be impacted are generally those who have found a substantial scale in downloads and revenue and have reached both our install and revenue thresholds. Remember, they have to hit both of those thresholds. This means a low or no fee for creators who have not found scale success yet and a modest one-time fee for those who have. Fee on new installs only. Once you meet the two install and revenue thresholds, you only pay the runtime fee on new installs after January 1st, 2024. It's not perpetual. You only pay once for an install, not an ongoing perpetual license royalty like a revenue share model. How we define and count installs. Assuming the install and revenue thresholds are met, we only count net new installs on any device starting January 1st, 2024. Additionally, developers are not responsible for paying a runtime fee on reinstall charges. We're not going to charge a fee for reinstalls. Fraudulent install charges. We're not going to charge a fee for fraudulent installs. We work directly with you on cases where fraud or botnets are suspected of malicious intent. Trials, partial play demos, and autom autom automation installs. Uh, charges. We're not going to count these towards your install count. Early access games are not considered demos. Web and streaming games. We're not going to count web and streaming games towards your install count either. Charity-related installs, the pricing change in install count will be allowed to will not sorry will not be allowed to your charity bundles and initiatives. This is one of those scenarios where one, this was unclear, so they had to make this giant post, and two, why wasn't this in the original post? Right? If you really thought it. it it, it, this just seems so flowery in so many ways, right? As a developer, it seems clear that no one particularly likes this. They have seemed to try and put it as flowery and nice as possible, but I don't know. This definitely seems like one of those situations where you can't, it doesn't really seem like they're being uh, completely forthright with how this new thing's right. Like, why wouldn't they just slap, if they really needed the extra revenue, as clearly they do, right? They, they're they not just doing this because, like, oh, you know, we would like some money. They need they need cash. They need influx of revenue. They're not making enough money, right? So why do it this way? It just seems so complicated. Maybe this is in a roundabout a better way because you both need to hit 
both thresholds of uh, what was it? So like for for like for instance, if you're doing the Unity Pro, you need to both make a million in the last twelve months and hit an install of a million player bases. Uh, I'm sorry, of a million. And then they had the all all the check marks. Maybe this is a better scenario for smaller devs, but on face value, it seems just overcomplicated. But we'll have to see. As it doesn't seem like they've backed down. Does not seem like they're going to be backing down. Uh. I say trepidatiously because anyone will flip a coin if they have enough pressure uh, from everyone. So maybe they will. Maybe they'll be too scared to keep this going. But the problem with doing this without a big enough head fund, like, right, you have three months. And if you've already made your game, you know, well, you have to make it now. It's it's just shocking that they've been like, hey, uh, in, in four months, there's a whole different way we're going to be charging you. Right, and it just seems so strange that you 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 the way that you would deal with your cu uh, customers that way, right? You just kind of spring on it. By the way, the game you've been working on uh, this it's completely different. We're gonna be charging you in a different way on top of the other ways we charge you. By the way, uh, this is this is a, an additional fee that we'll be doing. So, all in all, strange thing. I don't think I'm gonna be saying anything unique here, and and, and that. They've pretty much dropped the ball in every single aspect that they could have announced this thing. They could have just came out and they're like, hey, uh, we're taking a percentage revenue past X amount of sales or something. I feel like that just would have been easier to understand. Probably no one would have complained and it just would have been fine. But now with this, it just seems like what it seems like overcomplicated uh, to get a uh, different uh, the same goal, because. If, if it, they say it doesn't affect 90 percent of people so like who are you targeting with this is it just your top 10 percent of people that you want because if it doesn't affect 90 percent of people then you're probably talking about this affecting your top 10 percent of people making money so are you just trying to get more money from them it's also interesting this does seem to almost be targeted in this kind of new era we're living in of these subscription services right oh you know hey you're not making money off your you know, strike revenue sales well we don't care about your sales now we're going to get you on game installs and we're going to charge X person the amount of money, right? That kind of seems like what they're pretty much going for with this, right? In a new subscription era, right? If game sales doesn't matter, we kind of see that somewhat in what Sea of Stars did. They kind of uh, played chess like amazingly and actually incredibly a rare sense that they were able to launch on both PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium and on game pass and physically all the in in all three major things which both uh on switch which was also featured in nintendo direct so and i think they sold like a, a, a good bit of copies i can't remember how many but i mean they're they they cleaned house pretty much and they're probably laughing maniacally with how much cash they have because they might have they might have hit you know they might have hit budget on Game Pass. So like <laughs> with the money they got with Game Pass. So I wonder how much in the the, the black they really are. We just got big thunder crash over here. Uh, but maybe this is something targeted towards that with this new future that we're kind of find ourselves hurtling towards. If you can't grab your revenue from gross sales or something like that, maybe you get straight up from, hey, every time you install the game, we're going to take cash from you. Food for thought, as although on face value this seems bad, I think they definitely... Oh, let me back up. I think this is actually a bad idea, but with the new reality that we're finding ourselves in, maybe this makes more and more sense once you incorporate things like Game Pass, things like PlayStation Plus, etc., etc., that they're trying to make money off of that situation versus, hey, we don't really care about how much your game sells anymore. We want we want to make sure we're getting money if you're going to Game Pass, right? Because that doesn't really count technically, I'm sure, in some deals. And also, let's not forget, a lot of these people have specialized deals too. So I'm curious why this was implemented in that way. As assumably, if it only affects 10% of your market, that's probably your top 10% earners, right? So they all, or at least most of them, have specialized deals that probably make less money on this anyways, but... Who knows? Embracer 
Oh, well, I completely missed this up. Gearbox was acquired by Embracer Group back in 2021, but they may already be parting ways if the report from Eurogamer is correct. Embracer is reportedly working with investment bank Goldman Sachs and Aram & Co. to explore the option of a sale. And sources say the company has already received, quote, interest from third parties, end quote, in acquiring Gearbox. It's straight, that section I just read is straight from Eurogamer. Wasn't well, so much else there. This is just kind of speculation. There was a update to the uh, article specifically from uh, Jason Schreier stating that workers at Gearbox actually received an email saying nothing has been done yet, but they are shopping pretty much. Kind of uh, confirming like, yeah, it's pretty much true. Options are on the table. Everyone's going to be speculating. Heads up, right? So this is probably happening. Not shocking that they want to immediately get out of this Embracer Group thing as it will undoubtedly start crashing around everyone involved's head, right? This doesn't stop with just Volition. This doesn't just stop with some layoffs at Gearbox or something, right? This this will this is the 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 dominoes have been hit. The cards at the 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 house of cards has fallen, right? This has all begun to unravel in front of our eyes. This frankly terrible company is burning before us. I cannot wait for it to get out of here. I'm very excited for that to be a reality, as they have been. Uh, I mean, a pretty gross example of game of video gaming in in a uh, uh, video game slash capitalism esque scenario in the games industry they are a uh equivalent of some sort of leech that will want that will leech all these studios up and just burst and make a giant mess that someone will have to clean up and it's very very annoying that they did all this let's talk about some nintendo direct stuff right <laughs> smooth transition so I will be highlighting the things that I kind of pieced out that I feel like a big reveals but also remember I'm not covering everything you are interested in everything first off let me know as i will start incorporating them more into the show but i feel like nintendo is uh, such a specialized kind of company that people coming to my show are want probably the highlights and we'll save the deep dives for other things but if you want me to go over every single uh thing from the direct just let me know and i will start doing that I believe it opens with Splatoon 3 side order. This is going to be a single player DLC coming spring 2024. Mario vs. Donkey Kong, which is a remake of the Game Boy Advance game, will be coming to Switch. Princess Peach Showtime was revealed. This was last shown as the untitled Peach uh, game earlier this year. It looks very cool. It seems like Peach is like in a play and she's able to do different roles in that play. One was like a sword master. There was a kung fu master. There was a detective and all these things. It looks very fun. Uh, very cute art style as well. Uh, the original trilogy of the Tomb Raider games is going to be remastered for the Switch and will be available as a standalone title. I'm sure that will be coming to other uh, platforms as well. And of course, I'd add one, two, and three all in one. Uh, Atlas and Vanilla Wear announced Unicorn Overload for Switch and will also be coming to every other console. Uh, Trombone Champ was dropped uh, today on Switch. That is that fun rhythm game that like sounds terrible but is meant to be funny. I'm not, not one of those people that play those games, but enjoy if you are one of them. A new Contra game was announced, very cool, called Contra Operation Gulga, I think is how you pronounce it. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is coming to Switch summer 2024. A Nintendo Museum is being built and will open in Japan this coming in March. So that is very cool. One of the rare gaming companies that can actually warrant a museum all about them, right? It seems like uh, everyone else would just be too short and you'd be uh, you'd be jumping to the to the end and a lot of fluff in the middle. This is this actually makes a lot of sense to me as a Nintendo Museum is very much needed, right? Demanded, I'd say. Sora will be getting an amiibo. That that is specifically for me, as I'm very excited for that. F Zero is getting the 99 treatment, is what I called it. That launches today. So if you don't know what I mean by that, as a reminder, there were things like um, uh, uh, Mario 99, I believe, and um, what was the other thing? Tetris 99, where you know, 99 people play against each other in this kind of zone area platform esque thing, right? You play and you uh work to kick others out for instance tetris was you could target people and send them your blocks as you as you were clearing box and these things and they're getting this treatment with f-099 uh 99 people it seems to be on an f-zero game you're gonna be playing trying piloting and kicking people off the racetracks i assume so how that was gonna work 
that will be launching today. Even Chronicles Hunter Heroes was shown off. That's going to be launching April 23rd, 2024. I think the only game I ever backed on Kickstarter. I saw Suikin in uh, Creators Brian and I immediately swooped in. Final Mario Kart 8 pack will be coming this holiday, so that will be completely done with that DLC pack that they released for all the Mario Kart games. Or sorry, for the Mario Kart 8 game on Switch. That is going to be done this holiday. Among Us is getting another map called The Fungal, and that's coming this October. Of course, Among Us, it will be coming to all platforms, but it was just shown off here. To close the show, they started, They uh, they showed Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door is going to be getting a big remake for the Switch sometime next year. I did watch the whole Direct. It was very cool, very fun, very Nintendo in many ways. And I have nothing to say about many of this. Cool. There are a couple things that are for me. Most Directs aren't really for me. I'm not a very big Nintendo guy. Very rarely turn my Switch on, if I'm being perfectly honest. So just, you know, every now and then I'll jump on, play something, jump right off, right? So... This was never going to wow me, but there's a couple of games definitely that I'm like, oh, you know, I'll keep that on, keep that an eye. But most of the games that I'm interested in are coming to other platforms. So I generally find this as like, oh, I'll play that on Xbox or PlayStation. And if it's not on there, oh, OK, then I'll play it on Switch. Excited for a handful of these, of course. Uh, I'm excited to try out Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. I've heard nothing but great things about that. Unity Chronicles, I cannot wait for that, uh, for that to be in my hands. The Unicorn Overload looks very, very good, actually. Can't wait for that, and of course, I can't wait for a Sora Amiibo. Are you kidding me? Let's talk about the PlayStation State of Play now. So this happened, like, super recently, so I wasn't able to actually do a full write-up, so I'm going to be kind of doing the highlights. This is actually over on IGN uh, by Taylor Lyons, I think is what it says. And we're going to be kind of doing the highlights here. I'm not going to be stealing, like, everything verbatim from, from this guy, even though all he did was write the game and pretty much what they showed. Anyways. I'll start to say I'm going to try and save the big stuff for later. I'm actually going to let's start from the bottom because that's that's no fun, like doing all the cool stuff at the, the beginning. Right. So Tales of Arise is going to be getting an expansion in November for some reason. Uh, this game came out two years ago, so I, I'm happy. I love the game. Uh, but but why? Why now? Maybe it's teeing up a, a new uh, Tales of Arise game or a new Tales game. Maybe I don't know. Very strange. Foam Stars will be getting an open beta. They announced that the beta will be on PS5 and will start September 29th and will uh, conclude on October 1st. So get ready to try out Foam Stars. As I've heard, it actually plays very well. Uh, when it was shown off at the previous day of play, I thought it looked absolutely horrible. Helldivers 2 new trailer gives us another look at the gameplay. Uh, looks great. Third person completely changes what Helldivers is. Keeps, of course, the theming of you're fighting like these giant aliens slash alien bug things. Uh, they had the uh, sounds like they had developers playing it like and talking to each other because it, it wasn't like the oh God, like EA 2015 kind of thing where it'd be like, you know, oh, yeah, Delta Squad on, on uh, like, okay, let's go and things like that where it's on your six or, or, or uh Omega, like, cover my back while I run in. Like, it wasn't stuff like that. It just really, it's really sounded like four people who aren't used to being on audio talking to each other and playing the game, which it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. I liked it. But, and I'll talk about it later, but this was a very good state of play. A very except for Dice 2. It's a, it, it actually, I forgot to, I almost forgot to mention this. It was um, delayed to February 8th, 2024. But we'll have, uh, it launches on PS5 and PC. Thank God it was delayed. It did not need to launch around anything this year. If it wasn't going to launch in December, poof, get that thing out of here. Thank God. Uh, it, it can live and breathe in February. Ghost Riders Rise of the Ghost Lord is out next month on PlayStation VR 2. This will be releasing October 26th. Cool. I'm not, I'm, there's a lot of this is going to be PSVR 2. I just, I just don't care. You know, that platform lost me uh very early on i'm gonna for me to have any interest we need to be two to three years at a launch where i have a library to play roblox for ps4 will be coming out october 10th this is something that has very weirdly not been on playstation platforms and it is a huge game especially with the little people the little youngins right and little kids uh my wife she'll love that i tell the story on the podcast uh my wife uh is of course a librarian i've said that many times on here and, um, you know, you go to the library, you can rent a computer, right? And summertime, she always has 
waves and waves of these kids coming in asking for a Roblox computer, asking to play this thing, right? So this is definitely the thing with kids, right? This Minecraft, Fortnite, of course. These are these are one of the big three. So surprised that I took this long, but hey, they're there now. Baby Steps was a game that was shown. It comes out sometime next summer. Uh, this was it's probably it's being published by Devolver Digital. I, I, this looks like an Octodad uh, type game where you're like you're, you're controlling very simply, but you're meant it's meant to be obtuse and you're meant to mess up and laugh and stream it or have someone watch you play it and these things. Not for me at all, but hey, it's there if you want it. There's a new set of faceplates in dual senses, uh, dual sense colors specifically, called the Deep Earth Collection. These will be pretty much a very deep red, deep blue, and a silver color. Uh, both the red and blue faceplates and controllers are coming November 3rd. The silver will be January 26th of next year. G sorry, January, yeah, 26th, sorry. They look great. I'm not a big faceplate guy. I would actually prefer just getting black faceplates, and I need to. I just haven't done it yet. I just would love black faceplates on my PS5, and so it just doesn't look like anything's there at all because I'm not a huge fan of the design. I don't think it looks amazing, so I would love just to hide it and try not to like look at it because it doesn't look great, and it's huge and, uh, and cumbersome. And I definitely don't want a red and giant blue one peeking out at me from my entertainment center interestingly avatar frontiers and pandora was here uh they were shown at the state of play of course this due out december 7th curious why they showed it here i mean of, co of course i know why right you saw paid for uh, to show it here but it's just interesting that i saw i was like really it seems like ub would just do their own thing leading up to the game i don't know it looks the, the, what they showed, I was like, I mean, yeah, it still looks like the same game. It looks like Avatar. It looks like Avatar, but in Far Cry. So I, I'm not sitting here saying it looks bad. It's just like uh, you already showed me this. I feel like uh, I feel like you're maybe this is just, hey, you know, remember, we're coming out in a couple months. I know a lot of games have been out. Just remember, we're coming out December 7th. Uh, I don't know. I hope this is good. I really do. Resident Evil 4 Remake is getting a PSVR 2 mode this winter. Get excited. Resident Evil 4 Separate Ways DLC will be coming out next week on September 21st. This will be the Ada Wong DLC, pretty much, that you get to play as. And I'm assumably we'll also be able to play that in VR. Now, I have to admit, I turned off the moment this came on, right? Me literally turned the state of play off. <laughs> so I did not watch any of these two because, in my opinion, I'm just ready for them to come out. So I, I don't need to be sold on them. I don't need to be advertised to. I'm buying the game, so there's no point for me to watch any of this. Uh, so Spider-Man 2 was shown. Of course, Insomniac Games, they showed off a bunch of the suits. I think they showed a story trailer. Like I said, I saw this thing and, and show off the picture on IGN. They have like a bunch of different suits on there. So I'm assuming they were like, look at all the suits we have. Uh, may, and I assume they showed some Venom stuff. I was already spoiled on one aspect that I didn't want to be spoiled on. So I'm not going to say here just in case. Uh, you also don't want to be spoiled watching this, but there there was pretty big reveals that I don't want to know about, and it actually made me like uh, mute it on Twitter, so I didn't have to see it anymore. Uh, but that's Spider Man Two for you, right? Get excited! It's coming very soon. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is coming February 29th, twenty twenty four, and of course, this is probably the biggest announcement out of everything. Maybe not as big as Spider Man, maybe as big. I don't, hard to compare the two, but. Uh, definitely not as big as Spider-Man, I guess, in terms of sales, maybe, but who cares? Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Showed a trailer, a bunch of people got excited. I'm not the Final Fantasy VII guy. Loved uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake for what it was. I didn't play the other ones, so I wish they told me that. I'll always say that. I was like, why didn't you say play Final Fantasy VII before this one? Don't call it Final Fantasy VII Remake if it's not necessarily a remake. Um, I know the joke that you can make is, well, technically it is a remake. <laughs> I understand, but please, just, like, I'm going to have to. I need to play this game before this game comes out, like Final Fantasy VII, so I can really experience the game, because clearly you miss out on a lot if you do not play Final Fantasy VII before these games. So I will be doing that myself uh, to prepare for this. 
looks cool. Looks like you can play as Sephiroth, maybe. I don't think you. I, I, it's un, I, I assume you were playing as him. It looked like you were. I, and like I only saw a few snippets of people freaking out. The collector's edition went live today too. Three fifty, but a very cool uh, Sephiroth statue is included with it. Uh, aside from that, you know, happy to see it. It was a great state of play. This, of course, is a huge thing to end it on. Very, 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 very good state of play that they were able to kind of conjure together. Uh, and they didn't give you any time to think about it, right? They just kind of like, boom, here it is, right? But again, new trailer out there for you if you want to look at. I, I'm going to quickly read from the producer of the game. They had a very uh, nice Twitter kind of post that you can read i'll be reading yoshinori katsi producer for the game the final seven rebirth has been set for a release february 29th this second installment of the final seven remake project will feature elements from the previous game as well as the greatly enhanced features such as the vast world map to explore and synergy abilities with party members the story will unfold more dramatically than ever before with a rapid pace of major twists and turns we know fans are dying to see one scene in particular I'm assuming Final Fantasy people, and even if you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, you know what he's talking about. Because uh, I believe I do. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth can be enjoyed on its own as a standalone adventure. I doubt that. With the party leaving Midgar to explore the wide world beyond. But for those wishing to deepen their understanding of the story, a recap of the previous game will also be provided. We hope that both fans of those who have never played Final Fantasy IV will enjoy this game. I do not believe that you do not need to play the other one to enjoy this one. I think it is... Uh, pretty much as close to a lie as you could do <laughs> to, to that i just refuse to believe that i don't think you can really enjoy final fantasy 7 remake without playing final fantasy 7 the original game uh speaking as someone who did that and definitely was like i was definitely meant to play the game before this because jesus there's so much things where it's like i un i know i'm supposed to know this but I don't know it. Anyways, uh, let's read another one from director Nyako Nyako Naki Nyaki Amagichi Amaguchi. We're finally able to uh, announce the release date to you. We've been working tirelessly on Final Fantasy Rebirth since the release of Final Fantasy VII Remake. We can't wait for you to experience our labor of love in this title cloud and his friends. We have fled Midgar. We'll be setting out an adventure across an expansive world of untold adventure in pursuit of Sethroth. Well, the main storyline is bigger and more ambitious than the previous game's narrative. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth also embraces the concept of, quote, free exploration, end quote, with compelling stories, fun minigames, powerful monsters, and so much more to find throughout the world map. We hope you explore this world in great detail as nearly 100 hours of adventure awaits. We hope we will take this new Final Fantasy game experience in your home hands to enjoy. There's one more from Tetsui Nomar. Uh, that doesn't look like... Yeah, just give me through it. Unnecessary to read, so I'll skip that one. Now, there was also a PlayStation blog post about the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Spider-Man 2. Let's quickly, since we're already on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, let's quickly do like a quick Q&A that, that we can highlight here very quickly. Can you explain what we're seeing on the combat system here? Hamaguchi, Hamaguchi says, I want to highlight the new synergy moves most from the uh, battle system. This new mechanic allows the players to use synergy commands and abilities freely at any time by using up a gauge charge in a similar manner to limit breaks. So through the battles, players will feel the relationship and bonds and that have developed between the characters even more so than in previous game than in the previous game we've also added skill trees as a new element of character growth you can unlock synergy abilities through the skill trees too many new material new abilities not seen in the first game are available here so players will have more options to customize and build character loadouts to their tastes uh everything else uh, talked about summons i don't think we need to discuss that here speaking of mini games don't need to talk about that uh, a lot of gold saucer talk don't know what any of that means I think that's as I think that's as close to a, as something we should know than everything else. Uh, there was a scene with Cloud and Sethroth fighting together, but will the player get to control Sethroth? If you played the original Final Fantasy VII, I'm sure you can guess which scene I'm talking about. You will be able to control Sethroth in the same scene in this title as you did in the original. Interesting. Uh, okay, Final Fantasy VII Remake showed the story up until the escape from Midgar, but at what point does Final Fantasy VII Rebirth take us up to? We have mentioned this a few times before, but an order in which you can explore the locations is not the same as the original Final Fantasy VII. But there are some shifts in the order. For example, Wutai, one of the major locations, is not part of the route in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and will be visited in the next one. Although there are some changes in the order of the locations, the location depicted in this title extend up to, quote, the forgotten capital, end quote. 
the greatest fate of Final Fantasy VII awaits you. So up until the Forgotten Capital, again, whatever that means, I don't know it. Let's go to the PlayStation blog for Spider-Man 2. And let's see if there's anything I want to touch on here. Doesn't look like it. They show off the digital deluxe suits if you want to see, like, if it's what you want to get. I'll be getting it. Not even necessarily for the digital deluxe suits, just because I want to support the game more. Uh, the Red Spectre suit looks very cool, though. And, uh, ooh, the Takutsatsu looks sick. Also has little explanations of, like, why it's in the game, too, which is very cool. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much here, so I'm not going to be covering any of this. Uh, if you if you'd like, of course, head over to the PlayStation blog. You can get like full details there if you want to read that. But none of that looked important. To be honest with you. Day updates. We pretty much covered everything in date updates. I feel like in both state of plays and the Nintendo Direct. Uh, so we're only going to be talking about the Game Pass Core that actually went live very recently. Uh, Xbox Game Pass Core. I wanted to quickly highlight what will be included in the service. Of course, Game Pass Core is replacing Xbox Live Gold as a new way of, of course, you'll be paying for online, but you will now be a Game Pass member, uh, of course, which will, I'm sure, boost the numbers. Let's put that in quotes, numbers of Game Pass members in uh, quarterly earnings and all these things, right? So let's discuss Game Pass Core as we see it right now. Of course, they're gear. I, I, this is obvious that they're gearing up for this Activision Blizzard deal to go through and have a complete reimagining of Game Pass as we know it, I'm sure. So... Here are the games. They will. Uh, some of the games will vary on region, and the catalog will change over time. They'll change two to three games over time. So, these are the games in Game Pass Core. Among Us, Astroneer, Celeste, Dead Sails, Descenders, Dishonored 2, Doom Eternal, Standard Edition, Fable Anniversary, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Firewatch, Forza Horizon 4, Standard Edition, Gang Beast, Gears, Gears 5, Game of the Year Edition, Golf with your friends, Grounded, Halo 5 Guardians, Halo Wars 2, Hellblade, Sinuous Sacrifice, Human Fall Flat, Inside, Limbo, Ori, Will of the Wisps, Overcooked 2, Payday 2, Crime Wave Edition, Power Wash Simulator, Psychonauts 2, Slay the Spire, Spade Fair, Farewell Edition, Stardew Valley, State of Decay 2, Juggernaut Edition, Super Limbable, Super Liminal, Elder Scrolls Online, Teenage Fusion Ninja Turtles, Starters Revenge, Unpacking, Vampire Survivors. Very good list, I feel like. Very, very good list for Game Pass Core. I... This is, you know, no brainer for people who need this because you know, majority of people need need this for online anyways. So you're just enjoying more things on top of this. There you go. Now, that's the show for the week. Let's talk about what's queued up for the weekend. Of course, this could be a game, a movie, a TV show, a podcast, a book, comic book. Audiobook, anything, of course. What do you have queued up for the week? Of course, you can leave that in the comments below or tweet at me at email 1000. We discuss what we have queued up for the week. And of course, I will be playing more Starfield. Destiny 2 will always be there for me, waiting on the horizon whenever I need to play it to do X thing. I'll, I'll be playing a little bit of Trials this weekend, actually, to get the new hand cannon. It's not new. It's returning, technically, and whatever. Uh, if you don't care about Destiny, yeah, I'm not going to bore you with it. Starfield contemplating if i'm going to beat it this weekend i don't know i technically and you know this is like any skyrim fallout yeah. any point you could just go and beat the game right it doesn't take that long i'm sure it wouldn't take me long if i really wanted to sit there and, and beat the game i will say this i did get to the big point in the story that things start happening i will say that right i'm assuming that's the halfway point in the main story so i am there if people who play the main story understand what I mean by that, when something completely opens up that is it was actually very well hidden as a mechanic, I think uh, I didn't know about it unless people I wouldn't have known about it if I was not in the games industry discussion and people saying like, oh, I heard that this is there, this and there, and then just straight up people just saying it over the past few days. But I am quite enjoying Starfield, so I'll be up its ass this weekend and i heard liza p is very very good so i i'm not promising i'm going to dip my toes in it because i hate i hate 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 playing two games at once right because one just suffers always right it's my in my opinion i just hate doing the two games at once it, it, I'm, i don't really compare destiny in that specific avenue because i'm usually on for a objective and destiny is just that background thing where it's like not affecting when i'm playing other things and if anything it is like in the way 
So I usually try to do it as fast as possible so I don't have to worry about it for until next reset. And this is situation specific. I hate doing specifically like story based things all at once because it feels like I miss the groove. I'm not paying the respect to the game that I should be. So, you know, it, it, on top of all that, you know, it's kind of it's, it's disrespectful to me personally to be doing that. So I will be trying to finish Starfield or at least get into a state where I'm comfortable walking away for, for a little bit because we're so close. Right. We have Liza P coming up. I actually have a notes app of everything coming out of note. So let me quickly get to that. Okay. So we're, of course, in okay, so we had Pokemon Teal Mask, by the way, come out too, which is very annoying, because I'm like, oh, I want to play that. Mortal Kombat 1, very close to the uh, 19th, which feels wrong, now I'm saying it out loud, but I'm pretty sure that's true. And then Liza P is also on the 19th. Cyberpunk Phantom Livery is the 26th, Cocoon is the 29th, right? Those are all games that I'm that I want to check out. Yeah, so the timing is already precious, and that's not even bringing up October's madness, right? Oh, there's I already forgot when does Spider Man Two come out? October twentieth. That's right. That's right. Next month. Anyways. Thank you so much for joining me this week. This was great. I had the ominous lightning thunderstorm come in the background, which is very nice. It, it adds to the uh, environment, right? Every now and then I'll talk, and it sounds like the word of God is ringing in whatever I just said as, as some sort of affirmation. It's go and I'm like, yes. Yes, what I just said was very deep and intellectual. I understand God. Thank you. So that's pretty much been happening the entire time. I don't think you can hear it because it's, it's not like rattling my house or anything, but it sounds very, very cool every time. Every now and then I'll finish the discussion. It just go, and I'm like, yeah, I am cool. Anyways, I can't thank you enough for coming to this episode of the Easy Chiefs Game Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me this week. As Again, it was dense, and we had to parse through the Unity nonsense that happened over the week. And really, I, I one of the best things about the show is I get to really dissect my own thoughts live with you. And it always, I always come with, come out of it with a better perspective and reasoning than when I walked into it. And I'm always able to kind of parse through my arguments slash reasonings a little bit better after every podcast. And I'm always happy about that. So thank you so much for joining me this week. I want to remind everyone, remember, however you support the show, thank you so much. Remember, patreon.com slash AUG. You can like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Any of those things you're going to be helping. I haven't really been harping on them recently. Maybe I should, <laughs> should get back onto that. Anyways, I'll leave you because I'm very hungry and I'd like to go eat dinner with my wife. But until we see each other again, remember, go Chief.